extra, extra. Weird news. Weird all about it. Welcome, weirdos, to Weird News Wextra. We've got some weird news for you, uh, Craig. You've got a bit more weird news than me, so you go for it. My first story comes from the Mirror. Um, and the headline is, Cluster of UFOs spotted in night sky after powerful 5.6 magnitude earthquake. Ooh. Hmm. That's, that's a common thing, isn't it, actually? Uh, like ufos after earthquakes i think that's a, that's a phenomenon that's sort of recognized there is a short video but it's so short and the ad's so long it's not worth us bothering with to be honest but um we'll stick with the article so a cluster of gold simmering so-called ufos sparked widespread curiosity after they were spotted in the night sky above following a 5.6 magnitude earthquake close to turhal in turkey the tremor was recorded about 25 miles from Turhal, about 481 miles east of Turkey's largest city, Istanbul. About 6.10 p.m. on the 18th of April, while the quake had a shallow depth of six miles, it was widely felt in the region. Locals were left stunned when a swarm of bright lights shimmered in the night sky later that night. In one recording, dozens of bright lights could be seen shooting across the night sky as a couple discussed what it could be. The man said, you need to see this. A woman replied, what are those? Why are the birds shining like white gold? That's poetic. Oh, there's a little screenshot here. Hang on. Let me just do a quick because you'll see what the video is basically like. You got that? Oh, yeah. There's yeah, quite yeah. a lot of them and they kind of, in the video, they're kind of darting all over the place. Um, yeah, yeah, kind of weird. Guess that's why I'm talking about it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you'd hope so. The video was widely shared on Instagram on May 1st, as reported by What's the Jam? While some people had otherworldly explanations, others were more grounded in what they believed the lights were. One local commented, they're either souls or angels. Another what said, reference? they're seagulls flying over a light source. Uh, Ethan wrote, I don't know who Ethan is, but they mention Ethan. Uh, there are some natural phenomenon that produce lights in the sky around fault lines, especially after earthquakes. I believe that uh, one more than seagulls. Someone else says it's a gaggle of geese that were on the ground feeding in a cornfield when they were forced to take flight because of the earthquake. Um, Numi remarked, if I were an alien, I wouldn't bother creating mysteries. I would just expose myself. Filthy. Um, apparently, Tim joked that it's a reveal party gone wrong. Not really sure what he means by that. Sorry, Tim. Oh, like, like a gender reveal party or something. So they like let off a load of balloons or fireworks of like either blue or pink. Okay, that's weird in itself. It is very weird. It's very weird. Yeah. Uh, then it goes on to explain what UAPs are, which we already know that, don't we? We pros at this. Um, looking at the vi looking at the the yeah, you know, I had a quick look at the video, and yeah. looking at the the picture as well. Some of them look like they got when they're moving. It looks like they've got trails on them, which you know, unless they're on fire, I don't think seagulls or geese would have. Uh, but the phenomena after a like an earthquake on a fault line, that kind of I could that checks a little bit more for me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts on it? It's quite weird. It is quite weird. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Not sure no. about that one. No. Keeping in with the uh, theme of UFOs or UAPs, um, we have a Reddit one, which is Step Up from Mum's Net, um, which is... Unidentified flying objects reportedly caught on camera over New York City. Oh. A video posted anonymously to social media site Reddit last week shows what appears to be a sort of shaped unidentified flying object over New York City. According to the poster, the video was recorded by a friend flying back to the New York City from Florida. Uh, it is, they said, by far the clearest video I've ever seen. 
The object uh, in the video can be seen flying past the plane at a seemingly incredible speed. So fast, in fact, it only fully appears in four frames. However, given the object seems to be moving opposite to the plane's heading, it's unclear how much of its apparent speed is due to the movement of the plane itself. A slow or stationary object might seem to be moving very quickly due to the relative speed of the observer viewing it, blah, blah, blah. Um, the result was something called the motion parallax, whereby objects that are close to the observer appear to move faster than those that are farther away when the observer is in motion. So if the object is a balloon floating relatively close to the plane, as some have, spec as some have speculated, the speed of the plane, the proximity might combine to make it appear to be much faster than it is. It's a funny shaped one. It could be a drone, like a long drone. Um, yeah. So there's a video, did you say? Yeah, I can try and pull it up if you like. Oh, literally, it just flew across. Hopefully, it'll show us again. Let me. Now, do you see what I mean? Blink, and you would have missed this. But here we got it slowed down for you to have a better look. And here's what I know about the footage. This was captured on March the 25th, 2024 from a flight leaving from Florida to New York City. I think I've seen this before. End of the flight. Now, when we look at this object, we can see that it's tapered in. And I don't see the propellers where we would expect to see if this was a drone. And flying this close to a commercial airline, somebody would be in trouble if this was a drone. As for another plane, well, where's the wings? <laughs> you know? So, guys, this is a pretty incredible sight. And as fast yeah. as this thing is going, we can only estimate the speed. And I would I wouldn't like to guess. So guys, what do you think about this footage? Yeah, so until next time, stay blessed and keep safe. Stay weird. <laughs> no, stay blessed. <laughs> All right. So it looks fake to me. Yeah, I think it was something, but I think it was probably a balloon or a drone. It's very hockey puck shaped. It is, but you know, some balloons are that kind of shape. Yeah, you know, it's blurry. I don't know if it's if it's an edited video or something. I don't. To me, it doesn't look like it's on cool that background. Right. We're going to edit a video. People do all sorts of weird shit, mate. People make podcasts about this shit. I mean, <laughs> yeah. What's the weirder? <laughs> um, I don't know. It just looks like. Someone's chucked it onto the footage afterwards. It doesn't look genuine. It doesn't look like it's in that. Okay. I think it's about the lighting, maybe. It's almost too dark for the scene. I don't know. No, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. It's it's a janky video. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. So we have some seagulls on fire, and we have a <laughs> hockey puck that's been edited into a video. What have you got next? They're not all going to be UFOs tonight. All but of them. We got 11 but, UFOs for you guys. No, no I've got some I've got some good ones. But um, being as we're talking UFOs, I'll do my last UFO one. Do it. Uh, there is a picture with this one as well. I guess I'll read the article first and then maybe screen share so you can see what I'm talking about. So, yeah, this one comes from the Mirror. Uh, UFO hauled down the desert road by a tractor trader in Bizarre New Photos. Okay. Drivers on a highway in Argentina were shocked to spot an alien-shaped object being transported on the back of a truck. And it says, but this isn't the first UFO sighting in recent months. So this is from the 27th of April. 24. I've got a song in my head now. So the article is written by Cecilia. <laughs> You're breaking my heart. <laughs> um, a large object resembling a alien UFO, not just any UFO, but an alien UFO. Just those, I suppose those human ones. Was spotted being hauled down the highway on the back of a truck by confused motorists who drove beside it. Footage has circulated of the large, oddly shaped object strapped to a vehicle on a road in Argentina between the towns of, um, oh, the thing just jumped. Oh, there it is. Andacolo and Chos Melal, which people have been saying looked exactly like a UFO, wondering why it was there in the first place. 
Shared on social media, viewers have flocked to the comments to speculate about what the strange dome-like thing could possibly be. One person asked, could it be commercial equipment or a real UFO? While others insisted it was simply a telecommunications antenna. Um, another view says another viewed, another viewed joked. The Argentine economy must be really bad to carry an intact UFO on the roads in plain sight. Well, someone else suggested that the Argentinian military don't have a military plane to transport it. Uh, I'll show you a picture that someone's taken. You can have a look what you think. That's it there. Interesting. It's, uh, do you ever see Flight of the Navigator? Yeah. Wicked film. Just kind of reminds me of that when they're transporting that. Um, yeah, I don't know if it classes as a UFO. It's not flying. Uh, I guess. If you're being pedantic. I am being pedantic. <laughs> I'm going to be pedantic. I mean, that could be a lot of things. That could be a lot of things. But... Uh, it goes on to say it's not the first instance of strange UFO-like objects being spotted in recent times. In March this year, images of a strange blue object in the night sky did the rounds. Levi Hycock, 24, was driving around Essex with her friend when they attempted to take a snap of a radiant amber moon but noticed the blue object when checking a photo later. Um, does it give any more examples? On a separate occasion across the Atlantic in the USA earlier this month, another blue light UFO was spotted by passers-by in the desert in Scottsdale near Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's the end of the article. Blue light UFOs. Mm. There are comets that burn with a blue light. You get blue light and green light. It depends what the comet's made of. Um as to what it burns, like what colour it burns. Should we change the name of this show to Andy and Craig debunk every news story that sounds a bit weird? And let's let's try and you know sort of oh I'll, you know we'll call it as I see it, but <laughs> we're free for free for debunking today, which is funny because like you know we both said that's kind of one we're a little bit more inclined towards, you know sort of believing. I think since we've done big cats, we've all, we've. We've grown a sceptical mind. Yeah, that's it, you know. Yeah, that was my last UFO one anyway. The rest are, I was going to say normal, but. <laughs> well, I've got four more UFO ones. No, um, I think that's my last UFO one, so. Ah, here we go. Now, this one is from singular14.com, which is a site for strange phenomena. So I feel like I'm cheating a little bit because it's not a news site, but, you know, it's my podcast. Um, it's also a site that reports on strange news. So Yes. Now, this one is a bit old. It is and it isn't. It's just been reported, but um, okay. happened, the event happened in 2021. Um, why wasn't it reported sooner why were they not on the show um, this is true this is true why weren't they on the show that didn't exist then um, <laughs> well I see know, they're waiting for us to start a show so they could report on it I think so I think so and you know time's not linear you know it's wibbly wobbly right the title is dark a tall dark human like winged being reportedly seen in downtown Chicago building this ties in with the last episode we did I think so. <laughs> it which probably hasn't, which may or may not have come out before this Wextra. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would have done. I think it would have done. Lon Strickler of Phantoms and Monsters recently review, received following report from a man claiming to be a former security guard at a building in downtown Chicago. Hello, sir. In the spring of 2021, I was working as a security employee at downtown Chicago, Illinois. On this specific night, around 1.30am, I completed my usual rounds and then settled into the monitor room to check the footage. After about an hour, I took a walk to start my next round. Sitting all night can get tired, so when I need to stretch my legs occasionally. I'll start on the ground floor, then up the stairwells. He's going to tell us his whole routine. 
checking all the crucial points. I checked the entrances and exits, check to see if the offices were locked up, and then I'd head back down to the ground floor. When I got back to the third floor, the elevator stopped. When the doors opened, no one was there. I noticed the corridor lights flickering. It felt a little creepy when that happened. I got back into the elevator and went to the ground floor. Um, just side note, fuck being a nighttime security guard. Um, when I reached the ground floor after the elevator door opened, I made my way to the security room to watch the monitors. As soon as I sat down, I caught a fleeting glimpse of something unusual passing by on one of the surveillance monitors that was situated outside the security room. I could have sworn it had wings, but it went by too quickly. I got up, opened the door and peeked out of the room. My stomach started to churn. I could feel that something was uh, was aware that I was there. Don't ask me why. I just had an immediate sense of nervousness. I returned to the monitor room, started to review the CCTV footage and pulled up the feed from the camera. As I watched, I saw the familiar scene of an empty hallway. Then I observed a hazy figure materialise on the screen. It resembled a human form, but its edges shimmered and blurred, making it seem dreamlike. The figure floated down the hallway. It cast no shadow and seemed entirely devoid of substance. I continued to monitor the ghostly figure as its movement became more erratic. Then as it moved towards the front street door, it began to gain more defined form. I immediately got to my feet and rushed to the door. I walked to the hallway and quickly moved to the front. As I turned the corner, I saw a six to seven foot tall winged being that looked human-like. It was very thin and dark in colour, very much like that story we did on the last episode. Uh, the mm. Beltane episode, if anyone's wondering. The wings were almost transparent as the light from the street could be seen through it. The wings were huge, I'd say 15 feet in total width and unfurled. I was in shock. I accidentally dropped my flashlight on the floor and being turned and looked in my direction. That's when I noticed its eyes illuminated with a bright orange-red colour. Then in a flash of blue light, it vanished. It was totally gone. Um, he went back to the security room after that, and but the rest of the shift was a blur. He never mentioned the sighting to anyone before and never wrote it in a report. Why? Because when I went back to watch the recordings, there was nothing there. I know that I didn't erase it because there was no way that I could have done that. No mechanism would allow me to do so. I live alone, so there's no one at home to relay my incident to. Two weeks later, I quit my job after finding another line of work. Um, more recently, I was at a friend's home for dinner. Uh, other acquaintances were there as well. As we sat in his living room, we discussed, started discussing the Chicago Mothman sightings. I'd never heard of this phenomenon before, but I was intrigued about it. Um, and then, yeah, he goes on to basically say that he thinks he saw the Mothman. Um And yeah, just about how he reported it. Um, yeah, and then goes on to other um, Mothman reporters. Uh, and there's been a fair few, like way back from like the early 2000s and before, like regular Mothman sightings in Chicago. Interestingly, it does sound very similar to that one that we did on the end, that I did on the end of the uh, Beltane episode. It does. It also reads quite a lot like a creepypasta. It does. It does. Which makes me doubt the source. Stop being so negative, man. We've already bunked all the UFOs. <laughs> all right. No, I believe this one. The Mothman is out there, folks. <laughs> but it's interesting now. You've got the blue light. You've got a very similar description, the big eyes. But yeah, you know. Um, or he could have made it up. I would say the Mothman, from what I know, I remember reading the Mothman prophecies. Yeah. Years ago, but the Mothman never does anything as such. Obviously, no, he just sort of appears. Yeah, and then there's a massive disaster where the bridge collapsed in that mm. case. But it was, and then it was kind of after the fact was put on the fact that people were seeing this Mothman creature. So it was whether it was a warning or yeah, if he or... brought the disaster. It's unclear. Well, there you go. Could be either. Could be either. But I don't know if there's any disasters around Chicago at that point. No, because you're looking at two years ago, so can't think of anything. All right. Well, what have you got for us next? Uh, what should I do next? Let's do... Oh, yeah. So this one I haven't actually read. I've just got the headline, but Excellent. So what could go wrong? Research. 
So the headline is, so why were horses running loose around London covered in blood? I heard about this one. Four people were injured and taken to hospital. And I was just like, all right, I'm in. That sounds weird. I don't actually know what this is about, I'll be honest. So several horses were seen running through central London on Wednesday morning. Hang on, so when was this? This was the 24th of April, so a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, they were running through central London on Wednesday morning, leaving the general public pretty mystified. Unfortunately, four people ended up being injured and taken to hospital, and the police had to try and track down the animals before they ended up causing even more harm. Here's why the horses were on the loose and why one was covered in blood. The five escapees came from the Household Cavalry, which is made up of the two most senior regiments in the British Army, the Lifeguards and Blues and Royals. According to the Cavalry's website, these soldiers have acted as the monarch's trusted guardians, as well as being the public face of the British Army, both at home and abroad. A group of seven horses and six soldiers were out for their morning exercise in Hyde Park barracks when the trouble began and four of the riders were thrown off their horses. Five horses ended up escaping, having been spooked by building work. Moving away from Hyde Park barracks, the horses ran through Belgrave Square, injuring two people, then went down lower Belgrave Street. Passers-by caught the first horse when it glided with a car on Buckingham Palace Road. The remaining horses continued running with one hitting a tour bus uh witnesses said one crashed into a taxi this is just tragic i'm giving up on this all right it sounded spooky but i know yeah the, the horses were okay at the end they i think they got taken back and looked after um but yeah i i, I did read about this one when it happened and uh, you know, it's, it sounded more apocalyptic when I was going to say, like, you know, and, and the thing is, you look at the pictures, and one of them's a dark horse, and one of them's a white horse, and it's like it, it seems very, you know, it seemed like the apocalypse was coming, but um, no, it was just escaped horses that got injured. Yeah. So, all yeah. right, so that was um, another shit story to do for weirdness. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty, you know, out of context. Like, I, I kind of like the, you know. You never really get a quiet street in London, you know, but uh, I kind of like the idea of it being almost like that 28 days later kind of quiet abandoned street and then just seeing these two like bloodied galloping horses come past you, you know, that'd be pretty creepy. But no, it sounds like they went hell for leather like straight through crowds. Um, yeah, one of them spanked into a bus pretty hard. But yeah, from what I gather, they were taken back and looked after. Hmm. Okay, let's Damn. see if I can... Glad I didn't end on that one. <laughs> That's a <laughs> cheerful story, wasn't it? <laughs> so um, this one is uh, an interesting one. Uh, weird. Uh, Giles Brandreth, who is a... I think he's a broadcaster, and he was an MP possibly at some point. I can't remember. Um, blames himself for Rod Hull's death. I killed a man, the emu man. Uh, for anyone who is not in the UK listening to us, Rod Hull had a puppet emu um, that he was... He was doing it for years, wasn't he? Yeah, but wasn't he like Australian? So I don't think it's just an English thing. Um, Possibly. All right, I've got to look that up now. I don't think it's an English thing. I think it was just on TV in England. It was British. All right, I stand corrected. There you go. See, Look, important lesson. I'm always right. Um, oh wait, no. <laughs> he moved <laughs> to Australia. <laughs> um, yep. <laughs> Damn it. He moved to Australia. Still, I was right. He was English. Whatever. He came yeah. back to the UK in '71. Um, and you know it was great fun. He used to like you know go about with the emu and like just peck it. I think he pecked Michael Parkinson with it, and he got threatened by Billy Connolly, and it was all yeah. But anyway, beloved, beloved television figure. I'm still trying to work out why this is weird news. Um, so for those who don't know, he actually uh he was climbing onto his roof to fix an aerial, and uh, he fell off. And this happened years ago. Uh, that's how he died. Uh, 99 
So Goldsbrand said he. So played. he was ninety nine and he was climbing on his 1999. roof. Nineteen ninety nine. He was sixty three oh. at the time. <laughs> but you said he was ninety nine. <laughs> no. I was like, oh. hats off to him, you know. Uh, no, he he was sixty three. But anyway, it was in nineteen ninety nine. He climbed onto his roof and fell off. Anyway, just come out. This guy, uh, Giles Brandreth, blames himself for it. Um, we all do. We all, yeah, we all we all bear responsibility. No, we. I mean, we all blame him. We all blame him. <laughs> <laughs> he was on. He was on a podcast with um, John Cleese, and. He was pronounced dead at the, uh, on arrival at the hospital when a coroner late recording a uh, verdict of accidental death. Speaking to John Cleese in the latest episode of his Rosebud podcast, Brandreth said, I killed a man. It was Rod Hull, the emu man. 76-year-old former GMB presenter went on to explain that he had been at a theatre with Hull on the day of his death, a day that he said was blighted by terrible, terrible weather. Brandreth went on. He was sitting next to me. And he was complaining all through the show. He was interrupting the show almost, going on about how he wanted to get home because he wanted to watch the football, but his Sky Aerial wasn't transmitting properly. I said, don't moan about it. If you want to watch television, get a ladder out, climb on the roof and fix it, Rod. He went on to describe Rod Hull's accident, saying, and after the show, in his stormy weather, he went home, he got out a ladder, he climbed the ladder and tried to fix the aerial. Unfortunately, the wind was very great and he fell backwards off the ladder and killed himself. Brandra said that why he wasn't present at the time of the accident, he felt he'd encourage him to climb the roof. He also explained how Hull had surprised those who had attended his funeral with a pre-planned skit featuring his famous puppet. I mean, this is dedication, you know, that was an accident. He wasn't expecting to die, but he still had his funeral planned out. Don't we all? <laughs> it was a great funeral, though, because of his funeral, the coffin came in and the coffin was being carried in. And it sort of had a knock, knock, knock. He'd arranged a beak sound to be on the inside of the coffin, although as although the emu was already, was in the coffin as well. That's pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, goes on a little bit about uh, what he did. But this is what I found quite interesting. Uh, Brandreth, who was previously a Conservative MP for the city of Chester, also said that he, he had killed Harry Sakem, uh, describing how he just completed a phone interview with a Welsh actor, when he fell and slipped backwards down the stairs and a few days later he died. Uh, he blamed himself for that as well. I'm wondering who's next on this guy's list. Like death note. Yeah, that's it. Just don't talk to this guy. Don't go to the theatre with him. Don't don't interview him, you know. He's, he's not coming on the podcast. Um, yeah, so not the weirdest news, but I thought it was a little bit weird. If nothing else, that getting dredged up again. But... Uh, yeah, there's this guy that's apparently a uh, a celebrity who also causes the deaths of other celebrities by the sounds of it. What you got? See, nothing for you to deny there. Nothing for you to say. No, that's fake. No, I, I, there's no fake angle to that one. I met an emu recently. Yeah, there you go. Look, you, you're normally the one with the anecdotes. I there am. I am. I met two emus at Easter. Go on. Hilarious. Were they? Yeah. Did they have a pop like... hand up their ass? No. Not that I'm aware. They live at Moorforge. Oh. They're about oh, a year old. Traditional, traditional Viking emus. Well, the, the, my friend David, who owns Moorforge, he was given them. He was offered them, so he took them. So. I I don't have anywhere to put them, but I'd probably accept an emu if it was given to me. Yeah, they live it. They live in the new longhouse mostly. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, obviously they're still building the longhouse. Once it's kitted out, they won't be able to. But they're just really funny when they get excited. They run and like their necks kind of go like this, <laughs> and they're running around and they've got these tiny little wings and they're like running around. It's just. <laughs> It makes uh, you realise how fucking ridiculous uh, dinosaurs probably looked. Yeah. There you go. That was my anecdote. There you go. You got an anecdote. Look at you. Oh, look at me go. Look at me go. Um, oh, I'm going to save the best to last. All right. Search intensifies for emotional support alligator Wally, who's gone missing in Georgia swamp after alleged kidnapping. Georgia, this isn't a Florida man story. It sounds like a Florida man story. Go on. 
The plight of an emotional support alligator named Wally, who usually resides in Pennsylvania, has taken a wild turn in Georgia. Wally, with almost six foot long, uh, sorry, the almost six foot long gator, made a name for himself by visiting nursing homes, frolicking in Philly's Love Park fountain and even snuggling with his owner. But now he's gone missing after a chain of bizarre events that began with an alleged kidnapping and ended up in a Georgia swamp. Wally was temporarily staying in Brunswick, Georgia, when according to Heaney, uh, Heaney being the owner, uh, the alligator was swiped from his pen on April 21st. In the days that followed, Heaney's appeal for assistance to locate Wally surged across social media platforms. Wally was stolen by some jerk who likes to drop alligators off into someone's yard to terrorize them. Uh, that's according to a post on their official Facebook page for Wally. Uh, the Georgia DNR in a statement. Uh, yeah, so DNR is Department of Natural Resources. So the Georgia Department for Natural Resources in a statement uh, noted that a trapper attended to a nuisance alligator call in Brunswick on the said date and released the gator into a remote location, which is considered standard procedure. However, they did not verify whether the alligator in question was the internet famous Wally. Meanwhile, Wally's followers, who number in the hundreds of thousands on social platforms like TikTok and Instagram, are left worrying about his well-being. As his Facebook page acknowledges the difficulty of finding him due to the swamp's vast size and the presence of other gators. As the search for Wally continues, financial support has been pouring in via an online fundraiser with nearly 400 people donating over $10,000. The funds are earmarked for travel costs. Uh, advising costs and possible legal and veterinary costs. As Heaney's quest to find his beloved reptilian companion grows more desperate, Wally is very important to me, as well as to a lot of other people that he makes very happy and puts joys in their heart. Um, Heaney's bond with Wally is no small affair. The owner counts the gator as family, having been by his side through thick and thin, including difficult personal moments. Interestingly, Wally is no ordinary gator. He's said to be the first reptile to be legally certified as an emotional support animal. This distinction didn't prevent the Georgia DNR from declaring that Heaney could face prosecution if he attempts to capture Wally himself, a detail disclosed in a recent update on the Wally Gator Facebook account. Fans of Wally are taking matters into their own hands, strategizing in a Facebook group about how to rescue him. Suggestions range from bombarding the governor's office with phone calls to dispatching flyers in the local area and even roping in TV's Dog the Bounty Hunter to aid in the search. <laughs> oh, I love it. Just imagine Dog just finding this gator and like sticking a cigarette. Have a cigarette, bro. Go with Christ, bro. <laughs> I'm a dog. Big fat dog. <laughs> God, that's a name from the past, right? I think he he dropped all that because his, his I think his wife's like got terminal cancer. Or oh, something. she she died. She Beth died. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I'm beh I'm clearly behind on the news. Apparently so. You break yeah, that yeah, easier to me. Um, yeah. Sorry. Um, break it gentle. Uh, she uh, yeah. It was. I remember when he like um. Didn't he offer to go and capture Bin Laden? Just like, he was like, oh yeah, bro, I'll go and capture Bin Laden. Give I'll me a million honest. dollars and I'll go and capture him. All I really remember of him is South Park. Oh yeah, yeah, Cartman. <laughs> <laughs> he like becomes the hallway monitor and the next moment he's got like, the glasses and the wig. and Yeah, bro. <laughs> got a hallway pass, bro? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, an emotional support gator. I want one. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I don't. A six foot fucking long gator. Yeah, that doesn't sound like, you know. I've I kept lizards, but not quite that big. We used to have Go bearded snakes, dragons. You know. um, Ocean wants a bearded dragon, but. Call it Smaug. Not allowed. Not allowed. They used to have one called Falcor. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I had another one called Atreyu as well. Nice. Yeah. I I liked having them, but Emma didn't like the bugs because you have to feed them bugs and the crickets yeah. would get out. You'd be sat on the sofa and a cricket would like crawl over your back or something. Eh? <laughs> Freaked her out. I can I can see that. Yeah. 
crickets are for podcast eating. I might get one in here. Do it. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? That would be cool. Just have it in the background. Just sat on my shoulder. Call it weirdo. <laughs> Where's weirdo? <laughs> um, well, that kind of links onto my last one, actually. You're on your last one, eh? I am. Have you got two more? I've got two more, yeah. Do you want me to do another one, then? Oh, no, no. I've got... No, it's not my last one. Oh, he's... Losing track, man. It's getting late. Um... Reports of reptile in Buckinghamshire village investigated by brave Thames Police Valley, uh, Thames Valley Police. There's a bit of a theme going on tonight because we all our stories seem to be linking together, right? I know, right? Um, users of the Facebook page belonging to the police in South Buckinghamshire are happy to see the funny side after officers post the results of their investigation into report to the reptile's head poking above the surface waters near Chelsbury. Um this is a crocodile that was apparently reported. Police record uh, to reports of a crocodile seen in floodwaters near an English village have escaped unharmed after discovering locals were fooled by a replica. Officers from the South Buckinghamshire team at Thames Valley Police investigated after receiving reports of the reptile's head poking above the surface waters near Chelsbury, a village near Tring on the border with Hertfordshire last week. Um, but rather than having to battle and escape man eater, they found it. Maybe it was Wally. No, they found it was actually a replica or decoy of crocodile head available from as little as six ninety nine. Oh, I've got some ideas, uh, and described in some reports as a toy. Uh, it does look pretty convincing. I'm gonna say I just propped the picture up, and there's from the little thumbnail. That's pretty. Yeah, you know, it looks pretty realistic. Um, what I'd probably do is like have it on like a little motorized, like you know, you get the um, remote control boats. Yeah, like, wrap one of those to the back so it like just drift through the water and turn around and stuff. Uh, the force took it in good heart, posting on Facebook. Crikey, it's not every day that you get sent to reports of a crocodile in flight. <laughs> near Chelsea. I just seen the picture of the officer. Yeah, yeah, holding it like that. Um, <laughs> should we get that one up? That's what she said. it's his face do not be alarmed Uh the clock is now with us at the police station sorry what was that the picture underneath it shows just the head and it doesn't have a body it's it's quite obvious from that that it's not real yeah but But, if you see that like 20 30 feet away um did you know it's not that difficult to tell alligators and crocodiles apart? One will see you later, whereas the other ones, the others will see you in a while. Hashtag bad dad jokes. Um, that was apparently posted by the police. Uh, as well as a picture of the head in the water near the police vehicle, the force uploaded images of the croc on the table at the police station and one of his officers carrying it away. Dozens yeah. responded to the post of comments showing they saw the funny side. Karen Deep Channa dubbed the officer the real Crocodile Dundee of Thames Valley Police, while Caroline Ward dryly replied, so brave. Wayne Martin was one of several who went with a classic response of every crocodilian related story, saying, Hope you made it a sna- hope you made it snappy getting there. There was also references to April Fool's Day, while Martin uh, Denahay posted a photo of a model croc in a beer garden, telling officers, There's another one outside my local boozer if you want it. Yeah, I, I, I've as said that's that's given me ideas. I won't lie. <laughs> see how many, uh, see how many crocodile sightings I can get around Bournemouth. Reminds me of the there was one years ago, wasn't there, about a big cat sighting, and that was a big stuffed toy yeah. in the field. All right, give us another. As I said, I'm going to save the best one for last. So. I have read this one and I will be honest, the story is a bit disappointing based on the headline. So the headline is girl said she heard monsters in her bedroom wall. Mm -hmm. It turned out to be something much worse. Two monsters, three. Well, no. All right. Fair enough. Uh, A little girl made a horrifying discovery in her bedroom wall which is truly the stuff of nightmares. I'm against this article, I'll be honest, what it turns out to be. 
You're against Mom, it. I do not stand for this sort of thing. No, I don't. Because the way that they're talking about the stuff of nightmares and how it's worse than a monster. and like, See, for no. me, what would be worse than that would be thinking like someone's living in the wall or some shit. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I'm like, cool, what's this? What's this? And it's clearly clickbait. But Mum Ashley class has been tried to help her daughter sleep as the little girl kept complaining of hearing monsters moving around in her walls. But as the noise persisted, she investigated with a thermal imaging camera, which revealed a huge swarm of bees. Oof. I mean, that's... So, yeah. I'm not going to uh, read the rest of the article because they referred to bees as much worse than a monster. Truly Absolutely stuff of not. nightmares. Like, bees are perfectly fine. I know when she took it out, they found a honeycomb and stuff. Like, they were honeybees. They were... All right, it's not ideal, but... Yeah, you don't want it in your wall, but... Um... Nah. See, I I was in I was living in this uh, little sort of cob house and a vineyard, um, nowhere exotic. It was just outside of London, but um, my girlfriend and I kept hearing scratching behind. Like literally, the bed was up against the back wall, and we heard scratching like just at night, and uh, or just constantly. What the fuck is that? I went outside, got up on a ladder, and looked up, and there's a fucking hornet's nest there. And it's like, Ooh. they must have been like an inch or so from our heads. <laughs> I just sort of had these, and it took us a couple of days to get rid of them. And it just, I was, I was just thinking the whole time, like, they're just going to burst out. They're just going to finally get I'm through. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure hornets aren't aggressive either. Um, they're fairly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the trouble is if they come out at you, like right next to your head and they land and you uh, like that, they'll sting you. You know? Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah. They might not be aggressive, you know, but I don't want to be covered in them. Um, incidentally... Wise on... words. <laughs> incidentally, on to that point, you get two anecdotes for the price of one here. Oh, at work wow. today... You're spoiling um, me. Yesterday, I went into the pantry at work. Fine. Today, I went into the pantry at work. Notice a load of buzzing. Bees. Somewhere there are bees. There are bees flying around. They're nesting somewhere. The keyhole goes into the door, but it doesn't come out the other side. Like the key mechanisms in there, hmm. they're going in to the keyhole and then staying in there. And you put your ear against the door, and they're buzzing. They've started nesting inside the door to the pantry. <laughs> Uh, yeah. so yeah, I'm gonna have to get the door removed and get it taken apart and have the bees moved. Yeah, I might need to borrow that. Oh, I got my headphones on, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> For anyone that's listening, Craig's is putting on his uh beekeeping hat. Sorry, I am the bee man. You are the bee man, you are the walrus. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I've got to uh, go and take that, get that door taken apart, and get the bees out. I know someone that will collect bees and move them on. I think there's rats in the roof space here. Because I thought hear it scratching. was monsters, but it's even worse. Yes, it's rats. <laughs> there's scratching noises that go on. Haunted. No, we had that. As you know, there's a hole up there that I filled. Yeah. Because a rat had chewed its way through into the room. And now the scratching's over that end. Um, I'm going to end on, well, my one, my last one, on one that's, it, it's weird in its own way, but I also find it incredibly interesting. If we were being really clever, we would have linked the noises to the episode on the hint of Kaifek, but. Yeah, well, the weird news Which, comes when it comes. No, uh, the hint of Kaifek came out last Sunday. It did, you're right, actually. So in relative to us recording, yeah, Strange Noises in the Wall relates to an episode we've just done. Hint of Kaifek, maybe it was bees. Um, yeah, hint of Kaifek was actually bees. All of it. They picked up the pickaxe and they, you know, just very, very coordinated, aggressive swarm. So my last one, as I said, it's weird in its own way, but also I find it really interesting. Uh, this one's from the Huffington Post. Wild orangutan observed using medical plant 
to treat wound. Rachus, an adult male, plucked and chewed up leaves, a medicinal plant known to treat pain and inflammation, and then applied the plant juices to an injury on his right cheek. An orangutan appeared to, uh, orangutan appeared to treat a wound with medicine from a truck. I prefer a orangutan. Orangutan, I like that, an orangutan. <laughs> Orang <laughs> The latest example of how some animals attempt to soothe their own ills with remedies found in the wild. Scientists, so I, I can't speak today. <laughs> I've been talking to you for too long. Scientists observed rachis pluck up and chew leaves of medicinal plant used by people throughout Southeast Asia to treat pain and inflammation. The adult male orangutan then used his fingers to apply the plant juices to an injury on his right cheek. Afterwards, he pressed the chewed plant to cover the open wound like a makeshift bandage. Huh. Previous research has documented several species of grey apes foraging for medicines in forests to heal themselves, but scientists hadn't seen yet an animal treat itself in this way. It's the first time we've observed an animal in the wild applying a potent medicinal plant directly to a wound, uh, said co-author Isabel Luma, who is a biologist at the Max Planck Institute of Animal Behaviour. The orangutan's intriguing behaviour was recorded in 2022. It's only just come out. Um, photographs show the animal's wound closed within a month without any problems. Um, there are pictures with it. I won't get them up because they're, they're kind of grim. But they're just big gaping wound. Like, you know, a lot of like pinky sort of, you know, orangutans, they've got black faces. But it's got this sort of like big fleshy sort of pink gaping wound. And yeah, within the later pictures, it's just there's a bit of a wound, like scar there, but it's healed up. And I, I just find that amazing. You know, these the, these animals know to not only what plants will help them, that they'll, they'll actually essentially make a poultice. It's very interesting. Why did no one step in to help it with this gaping wound beforehand? Um, it was wild. So the obviously the uh, yeah. The morality yeah. of it is you don't mess about. Like you watch like David Attenborough documentaries and the amount of like animals that get injured and start not being able to hunt and they die, you know, but they don't interfere because that is nature, you know. I think quite often if it's a man-made problem, yeah, they will interfere. But if it's just something in the animal kingdom, you kind of got to let, you know, nature take its course. Yeah, fair. Um. But with the orangutan, I think it was actually another orangutan that attacked it. There was two males fighting, and he got a chunk bitten out of him. Um, but yeah, that's why it would be hard. I'm not sure I could do that. I'm not sure I could sit there and not help if I could. You know, it's difficult, isn't it? Yeah, it's a conundrum. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, there you go. Researchers believe the orangutan got hurt in a fight with another animal. It's not known whether Rackus earlier treated other injuries in a similar way, but they have previously recorded other primates using plants to treat themselves. Uh, yeah, uh, Borean orangutans rub themselves with juices from medicinal plants, possibly to reduce body pains and chase away parasites as well. And chimpanzees yep. have been observed chewing on the shoots of bitter tasting plants to soothe their stomachs. And gorillas, chimpanzees, and bonobos swallow certain rough leaves to get rid of stomach parasites. Uh, and it, it's great. So, yeah, it, it goes on to say this, actually, that if this behaviour exists in our closest living relatives, it kind of gives you an indication of how we started developing medicine. Mm. So, yeah, that's that's my weird news. Noise. Noise. What you got? What's our last one? Got to go on a bang, ain't we? Hundreds of witchcraft and voodoo crimes have been probed by police forces across the UK, new figures reveal. Should have come down to butts, so loads of it. Shocking new figures reveal that police across the UK have investigated hundreds of allegations of witchcraft and voodoo. At least 175 claims of crimes of occultists have been reported in the last six years, with some of the most wacky claims involving assault and abuse involving voodoo dolls and curses. An information request by the Sun uh, to Britain's police forces <laughs> found that coppers have had to deal with a surprising number of cases of alleged uses of black magic. 
Some of the most bizarre cases uncovered include a suspect West Mercia police were hunting who allegedly sent letters threatening to use voodoo techniques to harm them and North Wales police had to deal with threats from a man that he would use black magic on his probation officer. Uh, po police in Nottinghamshire look into 78 claims, while in Humberside police dealt with 60 cases, including six people who claimed curses caused them to lose control of their bodies. Wow. Um, There was even one instance of a woman who went to police believing she would be cut up because she was a witch. The information request revealed that most reports were dismissed because formal investigations and prosecutions were not in the public interest. However, some were investigated further in cases where mental health or domestic abuse were a concern. The increase in so-called witchcraft coincides with a rise in popularity of supernatural superstitions online. On TikTok in particular, hashtags in relation to witches were used two million times last year. I should have cut TikTok from this because we don't like TikTok. I was going to say, we need to get some of this traffic our way. <laughs> no, because they just ban our videos. I was thinking of the rest of them, you know, it's all getting popular online. It's like, you know, send them to us. <laughs> Meanwhile, some of the most popular witches on the social media site gain millions of views on every video. Surprisingly, witchcraft was only decriminalized in 1951 when the Witchcraft Act 1735 was repealed. For 200 years, being a witch was punishable by death and at least 500 people, mostly women, were hung for being alleged occultists. One of the most famous witch trials in English history took place in Pendle, Lancashire in 1612. Twelve women from the surrounding area were accused of being witches and ten of them were eventually put to death for their alleged crimes. That's it. Oh, <clears throat> so, yeah, it's you do keep hearing about it and like you, you end up like you hear stories of limbs washing up in the Thames where they think it was some kind of well, they well, they do think it was actually a sacrifice. Like that's what the police go with. They think it was a a voodoo sacrifice. Um, yeah. Interestingly, uh, where I'm from, Hartford, is where the trial of the last witch condemned to death in England was. A lady called um, uh, Jane Wenham. But uh, yeah, she was she was let off. I won't tell the whole story. I'll save it for another day. But I was um, say, it sounds like we need to do an episode on witches. I think we do. I think we do. Uh, I've got a few people we could speak to. Are they witches? Uh, yes. Yes, I know some witches. I'm sure you know some witches. That was very accusatory. I'm sure you <laughs> know some witches. But, uh, we say, um, uh, it's a very broad term. Paganism is the <clears throat> one of the fastest growing religions in England. It's the fastest growing religion in the Southwest. I know that much. Weird. It is weird. Um, yeah. Speaking of weird, I think that is it for Wextra for this time round. And I yeah. anything else, I think that's it. I think that's it for this one. Well, thanks very much for tuning in. And uh, until next time, stay weird. Did we end the other ones with stay weird? No, I don't know. Maybe. They're still staying in. Yeah, I don't know. Thanks, Kaylee. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>